so welcome back guys uh, this is madhav pvl and today we are going to discuss about the buffer catch so what is buffer catch so basically buffer catch uh, kernel can read and write the data directly from the disk uh, disk is nothing but the thing which we can just see so a uh, kernel can directly read and write the data directly from the disk but response time is slow because of a poor transfer rate but now uh, we are not facing this thing so because now we are having the advanced usb 5 uh, 5.4 version and we can just see immediate transfer of the data is done very fastly so but uh, in the olden days uh, we use uh, the disks right so the transferring uh, rate is very poor so that's why uh, to minimize the disk access kernel keeps a pool of data buffers called as a buffer catch so uh, kernel keeps a data of uh, data pools which is known as a buffer catch it contains recently used disk blocks so buffer catch is nothing but it will just keep the data which is recently used the data which is recently used the disk blocks which are recently used will be just stored in this particular buffer catch not every disk block will be stored in this buffer catch only the few which are which were used frequently and which were used very recently will be stored in this particular buffer catch uh, so now let us just get in deep buffer headers so buffer headers are nothing but uh, uh, for each buffer catch there will be a particular way of arranging the things so basically we need to know what is meant by a uh, buffer header so buffer header ker kernel allocates a space for number of buffers according to the memory size and the performance constraints so it depends upon the particular application so if you just consider the example of an xbox so if you are just playing in the middle of a game then if the uh, then we can just say like if the power cut is done then the xbox will just get uh, power turned off so if you just uh, again turn on that particular xbox and get into that particular game then we can just resume the game where, where, wherever the power cut is done so immediate uh, buffer catchy will be done uh, time to time in that particular xbox game right so here it is the same so kernel allocates a space for number of buffers so according to the memory size and performance constraints it depends upon constraints it depends upon particular application so if it is a word then it doesn't require more performance constraints it doesn't have any particular memory size right so some particular buffer allocations will be done so that if uh, if you forgot to save that particular word file then if you just uh, come back again then it will just show like uh, uh, do, does it need to restore the data which you uh, didn't store properly in this previous uh, usage of this particular word it will just give some prompt so that is the thing about this uh, buffer so kernel allocates space for number of buffers accordingly so there are two types of paths in buffer that is memory array data from the disk the data which is taken from the disk will be stored in this particular memory array and then the identifier buffer header so there will be different number of buffers not only one particular buffer there will be n number of buffers so each buffer will have some particular identifier so these are the two parts of uh, any buffer so the data in a buffer is directly proportional to the logical disk block so logical disk block uh, so we can just call the data buffer as a logical disk block not the physical disk block but the data which is in this uh, disk block will be stored in that particular buffer data in the buffer a disk block can never map more than one buffer so only one particular disk block will map only one buffer so one uh, is proportional to one so this is a a type uh, this is a type of storage of that particular buffer device number uh, block number status and then pointer to the data and then pointer to the next buffer pointer to the previous buffer pointer to the next buffer on the free list pointer to the previous buffer on the free list so this is a way the whole uh, buffer is going to get stored i will just discuss one by one device number specifies the logical file system so device number specifies the logical file system of a physical disk block and then block number of a data on the disk so block number is nothing but it represents the data on the disk and then status field summarizes the current status of a buffer current status of a buffer in the sense a uh, buffer will just have some particular queues and uh, heaps so it will just uh, execute one by one right so the status of the buffer will be uh, summarizes in this particular status field so say status of a buffer in the sense uh, buffer is either locked or busy buffer contains valid data 
kernel must write buffer contents to the disk before reassigning the buffer kernel must write the buffer contents to the disk before reassigning the buffer after usage of that particular buffer kernel need to rewrite the whole things into that particular disk so kernel currently reading or writing context of the buffer to the disk process waiting for the buffer to become free so these are the uh, status of that particular buffer so the structure of the buffer pool uh, kernel follows the last recently unused algorithm for the buffer pool uh, LRU the least recently used uh, unused algorithm for a buffer pool so kernel maintains a free list of buffer that preserves that least recently used ordered so free list of a buffers that preserves the least recently used order so but kernel follows the least recently unused algorithm for buffer pool kernel maintains a free list of buffers that preserves the least recently used free list for le least recently used and then a uh, least recently unused algorithm for buffer pool so dummy buffer headers marks the beginning and ending of the list a dummy buffer headers dummy buffer headers marks the beginning and the ending of the list when system is booted every buffer is on free list so when system is booted every booted in the sense if the whole thing is cleared then every buffer is on the free list when kernel wants any buffer it takes from the head of the free list so head of the free list uh, which is the buffer which is closer to the head of the free list then the kernel takes that uh, buffer for allocating the data recently used, recently used data it can also take a uh, specifically rather than this but uh, the kernel will consider this from the free list and sometimes also this uh, the user buffers when becomes free are attached to the end of the list so after the usage of the buffer they will be just uh, attached to the end of the list so this will be like a circular queue so the whole thing will be like a circular queue so this is a free list header and then this will be the buffer one and this will be the buffer two and this will be until the buffer n so it will be like a circular queue so the buffer ends end pointer will be towards the free list heads uh, front pointer so the free list front pointer will be towards the buffer list last uh, pointer so it will be like a circular queue which we are just discussed in this data structures theory so if the buffer one is deleted then uh, here we can just say like Yeah. So if the buffer is deleted, so if the buffer is deleted, you can just say like So if the buffer is deleted we can just say like buffer 2's uh, uh, previous buffer 2's previous will be towards the free list front so it will just join like this so yeah uh, now we can just see like this previous will be connected to the free list next so here we can just see this is like a circular queue right so when kernel access the disk block it will search for a buffer with appropriate device block number here we had just discussed about this uh, block number so it will just search according to that uh, device block number it divides the buffer into a simple hash queues and uniformly distributes the buffer across the list performance doesn't suffer if we just use this uh, simple hash queue so it divides the buffer into simple hash queue and uniformly distributes the buffer across the list simple hash queue is nothing but according to this block number uh, if we just consider this 4 as a hash queues so mod 4 if we just use this block number with mod 4 then it will just give some reminder right so according to that reminder the data will be stored in this if you use mod 4 the reminder may uh, will not be more than the 4 right so it will be less than the 4 so we can just use this uh, hash queue so 28 mod 4 is 0 so it is 0 uh, 17 mod 4 is 1 so it will be in the 1 so it depends upon the basic hash queue a buffer in a hash queue may be busy or free so either if it is in a hash queue or not 
we can't just decide whether the buffer is free or not right so whether it is in hash queue or not the buffer may be free or not we cannot decide like that uh, so this is the thing about this circular queue so if this one thing is removed then this will be connected to this so this will happen in this uh, particular structure of this buffer cool buffer pool as it is a circular queue so this is all about the buffer catchy um, thank you for watching